Yes, I've been coming to you for the last 10 minutes or so. And he will begin talking shortly. In the auditorium is Henry Asantichum, the spokesperson of the GFA, who, don't forget, told us on Friday on our um, show, on our Friday sports show game plan, that this event was going to happen. So we've been ready for this since Friday. Remember, there's been some breaking news this morning, just this morning, that two players have said they should not be considered for selection. Abdul um, Fatao Isahaku, who has been in a rich vein of form for his club side Leicester, he says he should not be considered for selection. Same also for Baba Rahman, who also says that he should not be considered for selection at all. So you can expect that these two names will not be there. Failing which we also understand that Mediamas Jonathan Soa is sure to be in this squad as well. These are the three sure names we know. There are some others we probably can tell. But right now, let's leave all that to Chris Hutin. The voice or the person you will see now is Henry Asante Kuhn, the spokesperson of the GFA. This is Joy News. Stay with us. We also have um, a member of the Executive Council um, here with us, Nana Safo Odro. Of course, our president, as regards sports writers in Ghana, is also here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's acknowledge Mr. Kwapena Yabua. And then the president of the Ghana Football Association, Kent Edwin Senior. So, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Henry Asanjo, and with me is the head coach of the Black Stars, Mr. Christopher Hilton. So before Chris announces his squad, we will um, hear a message from the president of the Football Association. Uh, once he is done, Mr. Chris Hilton will give us um, the names of players he has selected, or he and his technical team have selected for our participation in the Africa Cup of Nations, and then we'll open the floor for your questions. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're welcome. President. Happy New Year. In the lead up to Chris Hutin's naming of the squad, up to um, 18 at last count, I believe, countries have already named their squads for the Africa Cup of Nations. Some have named 25 uh, players for the competition. Some have opted for 27. A few have opted for 23 straight. So um, we understand that Chris Hutin will name the full complement of the 27. CAF allows a maximum of 27. Recall that about 10 days ago, he named, or rather, he submitted um, a 55-man squad to the Confederation of African Football. That was a requirement for all the 24 countries going for the Africa Cup of Nations, that every team was supposed to name 55 players provisionally. Now, the aim of those 55 names is to ensure that even if you name your 27 and some should get injured, you, could, you can only name replacements from that pool of 55. Now though, let's hear from the GFA president, Kurt Ukraku, on his initial remarks before the coach names his squad for the AFCON. And that includes the opportunity to serve and the opportunity to excel in the upcoming AFCON tournament. Indeed, we are here to listen to our men who have been chosen by the Tenkrat team to represent our country. And very soon, the head coach will take us through the list of the squad. 
We will then know whether he's picking 23, whether he's picking 25, or whether he's picking 27. These are his decisions. <coughs> All of us here have opinions on who must represent our country. Whether the player is your friend, your brother, your uncle, all of us here and beyond the confines of these premises have opinions. But at the end, Ghana decided on our own to give that mantle to Chris Hilton and the rest of the technical team. And that's why they are here. My plea to all of us is that once the squad is announced, the entire nation must get behind the squad. <laughs> My plea, even if I have to kneel down and beg the entire country, I will do so, is that we have one senior national team <coughs> men. And this senior national team men is called the Black Stars. And once the men for the job are announced, they are our warriors. Let's get behind the squad. Let us leave behind us all the pre-announcement discussions. And as Ghanaians, let's push and put our weight behind the men who have been picked to go to Côte d'Ivoire <coughs> to fight for glory for our dear country. This is the only way the boys will feel the adrenaline levels of our countrymen and women. This is the only way they will then be very focused on delivering that target of envy. We all know that the performances of our dear team has not been too stable. <coughs> but this is the moment that the boys need our undiluted support. When the times are very difficult, when the times are very unstable, those are the times they need your support, my support, and the support of the entire country. <coughs> Coach Chris Hilton and the rest of the backroom staff need your support, need our support. And I'm extremely happy that all of us are here. It's a signal of our commitment towards offering this technical team and our players our undiluted support. <coughs> Ivory Coast is possible. <laughs> we have seen top performing teams fail at big tournaments. We have seen less experienced on fancy sites win big tournaments. So it is possible. <coughs> Again, whether in good times or in bad times, all of us here in our dear country called Ghana have only one senior men national team. It is the Black Stars. And we are the Black Stars. Yes. And we are Ghana. <coughs> Speaking in here this way. Can you use the microphone? Yeah. Sure.
much. So please, let's put our hands together for the President of Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Indeed, it is possible. Well, the time is here. Um, we have to now get ready and hear from the head coach, the Black Stars, Christopher Hilton, as he announces his squad for the next Afghan in Ivory Coast. Hereby announce my 27 man squad for AFCON 2023. Uh, goalkeepers Lawrence Atizigi, Richard Ofori, Joseph Wallacott. Fullbacks Alidu Seidu. Dennis O'Doy, Kingsley Schindler, Gideon Mensa, Hamid Fatal, Central Defenders, Daniel Amati, Nicholas Opoku, Alexander Jiku, Mohamed Salisu. Midfield plus advanced midfield players. Salih Samed, Baba Adrisu, Majid Ashimir, Elisha Owusu, Richmond Lamptey, Mohamed Kudos, Andre Ayu. Ransford Konifstorfer. Wingers, stroke wide players, Osman Bukhari, Joseph Pencil, Jordan Ayu, Ernest Nuama. Strikers, number nines, Inyaki Williams. Antoine Somenu, Jonathan Soa. And that completes my 27 squad list for AFCON 2023. Seven is out officially uh, here on Joy News coverage live also on our Twitter space. Danny Cranton is doing that. I'm Gary Al Smith. Let me go through the list of 27 players Chris Hutin has just mentioned again. Lawrence Atizigi being one of the goalkeepers, the other two being Richard Ofori and Jojo Wolokot. For defenders, Ali Duseidu, Dennis Odoe, Kingsley Schindler, Gideon Mensah, um, Fatau, that's Mediamas Fatau, Daniel Amate, Nicolas Opoku. Let's go back. There are questions being asked. And also, just a quick one. Fatau has been sensational for Leicester. His name hasn't been mentioned. Can everything? Yes. So, first question as regards um, my responsibility and pressure of the job that I'm in. Um, 
I've been fortunate enough to uh, be in two roles since um, being employed by the GFA. One as a technical advisor and of course now as head coach. So in that period of time and the period of time that I've spent here in Ghana, um, which is a, a substantial period of time, watched a lot of local games, watched so many with my staff, I've watched so many local players. Um, it's very, very easy to understand, to understand what the, the Ghanaian public expect from the Black Stars. I know historically, um, but I'm here now. So um, this one was no surprise to me with how the Black Stars have historically um, competed in this competition and worldwide. So yes, it's a, it's a big responsibility. Um, but it's a responsibility that I look forward to and look forward to from the day that I took the job on. My role is to take a team into uh, an AFCON tournament with high expectations. And uh, I don't want to be taking a team there that doesn't feel that it doesn't feel that we can compete and win a tournament. And uh, this is what myself and my technical team will be certainly addressing consistently with the group of players that we have. Um, as regards Fatal, um, when uh, I put this squad together um, and myself and my technical team, what I was uh, adamant about was that this was going to be a balanced squad. So there is method and, and a, a very big thought process that, um, that has been developed on every player that we've picked and uh, every position that we've thought about. Um, we have a situation where probably from the players that we picked, we have potentially seven players that either can play on the right or are playing on the right. And it's my responsibility as head coach to, to balance this squad. And, and in balance this squad, there are always very difficult um, decisions that I have to make. Certainly the, the individual that you've spoken about in Fatal, yes, was a, a difficult decision. Um, but I have to make these difficult decisions for what I believe are the correct reasons. Okay, um, next question. <coughs> Julian. So the, the first part of the question is the, the thought process going into this competition doesn't, doesn't start two days before me naming the squad. This thought process starts from the time that we qualified for AFCON 2023. Um, what I want is a balanced squad. And um, this is what I've been working hard at. And also, this is part of the reason why we've spent, myself and my technical team have spent the amount of time that we have. Uh, also, looking at the local games, the local players, the players that fit into maybe positions that we feel that, um, that are not maybe 
the strongest positions that um, that we can have. So the thought process works always around, I say, the balance and having the correct balance in in the team. There will always be players, and I'm quite sure that if I looked at everybody here and asked everybody here of a 27-man squad, there would be however many different squads. But the responsibility is down to myself and my technical staff. And one thing I can assure you is that the process has been a long and hard process where we've spent many hours discussing, a huge amount of hours watching either live or, or video, and um, this is our conclusions. Um, as regards the price uh, I have to pay, this is not something I think about. I think about one thing. I think about putting a team together for AFCON 2023 that will make this nation proud. This is all I think about. Okay, um, Benjamin. Coach, um, good morning. Uh, Benjamin Niketia from CTFM City TV. I have three questions, but I'll keep it brief. So, we know that when a team is going to a tournament, it needs to take its best players. I want to ask you, first of all, uh, we've had some players who have had strenuous relationships with the Football Association or with the national team, i.e. Alfred Duncan, Jeffrey Schlopp, Bernard Mensa. What efforts have you made since you became coach to reconcile with these players and did you talk to them ahead of this tournament? Secondly, um, Sula Mutari spoke about discipline after the World Cup. I mean, we've had reports of issues of discipline in camp. How much of a disciplined stamp do you think you have had on this particular squad going into the tournament? And lastly, are there any injuries <coughs> among the players that have been announced that we probably need to know about? Thank you. Okay, so sorry about the delay, but uh, I had to um, um, write down the three questions because I don't want to miss uh, anything. So um, what I can tell you is, is that on uh, any players that have been involved in the past that haven't been involved for quite some time, and, and in particular the three players that, uh, that you've mentioned, um, the the two areas that I have to look at. One is, have I made contact? Which means, uh, am I sure that this individual player continues to, know want to, to not want to be involved with the, the, the national team? Um, and also, that this player will ultimately be in the squad. And that's, that's the balance that I have to have with uh, every player that comes into this equation. So what I can tell you is, is that on all three players, on all three players, they come into the two categories that I've spoke about. Either one, that I have contacted them, uh, or two, that they would not have been in my initial 27, my, or my final 27 squad either. So both, or sorry, all three of these players fall into this category. Um, as regards, uh, discipline. Um, I think on the, the question of discipline, I'm not quite sure of the, the nature of the, the question. Um, so you, you either explain that more or we, we deal with that afterwards. So um, there was an instance where I think, like I said, I quoted Sulu Montari, he said he was shocked to be in camp and he was surprised at moments where there were probably team gatherings and some players were on live Instagram and on TikTok and stuff like that. He didn't think that uh, was right for discipline or for 
team car tie in a tournament. Okay, so you know this 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 uh, this is very very easy. You know what what you are speaking about is hearsay. You are speaking about something that certainly has not been brought to my attention. We have a group of players on it in every camp that is with us for a period of time. Uh, our responsibility, apart from the results of the games that we play, is to have a good spirit in the camp. Um, my feeling, my feeling is that the camps that I have been involved with have not lacked spirit. And this is not my time, this is also the previous coach's time, that the, that the camp has never lacked spirit. <clears throat> this is a, a group of players that are individual players that come together, that are proud and delighted to see each other. So these are the only things I can speak about. You know, what we have to do is install the discipline that we need in a short period of time. Camp sometimes can be two days preparation before, before a game. And uh, we are very keen and always, always run a camp with the discipline that we need and the spirit that is needed to incorporate good performances. So I can't comment on what is hearsay. Um, the last one is just regarding the uh, injuries. regarding injuries. Um, uh, Thomas Partey, who um, for sure, and I, and I say this not in a detrimental way to the squad that we have, um, but he's one of our most important players. This, this we know, and withstanding his injury, he certainly would be in the squad. We know that. We know the quality of the player that he has, that he is. Um, but this is a player that has a substantial injury. And I've spent a lot of time over this period of time with Thomas and also engaging with the medical staff at, uh, at Arsenal Football Club. Um, they will treat this, this injury with caution. So, so will the player. And this is a, a big injury for him and the biggest injury that, that he's had. And um, the most important thing for me as, as head coach um, uh, and um, uh, our association is to give him the support that he needs um, through this period of time. From all the information that we've been given, the timelines of his recovery and the caution that it will take will not meet our timelines for AFCON. So apart from Thomas, we have um, Mohamed Kudas, who uh, I think we are expecting him to join the, the group hopefully, hopefully in a, in a few days. He has a very slight, very slight injury uh, issue that um, just needs to be dealt with uh, before he joins camp. But we're hopeful, we're hopeful of having him uh, very shortly. Achu. Oh, for what he Clara. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Clara. A musician and I work with TV, Super TV. Yeah, let me say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you too. You know, we can is, we always interested in resources here. Yeah? Can you assure us that this time you're not only going to participate, but you bringing us the cup? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think there's. Um, I don't think there's uh, anybody in the room that can ever guarantee anything. Um, but I'll go back to my initial statement, is that, uh, uh, that I don't want to be head coach of a team that doesn't feel they can win AFCON 2023. Achoo. Coach, my name is Achoo Tan, I'm from the Sports and <coughs> I have concerns about the back and forth about the company base for the team. It raises questions about how coordinated this was. The last time our brother Henry was on join, and he indicated that perhaps one of the considerations that were made in rescinding that was cost. 
um, drawing comparisons, I think, between the cost of clean water in South Africa and then um, Namibia here. Is that something you are comfortable with? Because to the best of my knowledge, the most important consideration in determining the open has to be the sporting value you get from each of these friendlies. Number two, did it come to your knowledge about the friendly or the opportunity to play Algeria before the tournament? And because I expect that at least we'll have one, if not high profile, mid profile team, especially because we've got Egypt in our group and in the events that we were to progress, we've got Nigeria and then Ivory Coast in the other group. I mean, the first place. He's talking about the camping days. Yes, no, no, it's fine. And it's then fine. if Algeria ever came to mind. Yes. Or what was it? Um, a consideration. <coughs> okay, so thank you. Um, I think as regards um, camp, <coughs> I think that's something that has, has already been spoke about. Um, in uh, any preparation or any schedule, there sometimes can be changes. And what we have to do always as a technical staff and an organization is to embrace those changes um, and adapt accordingly. So that we will do. We will make sure that um, this is a good camp, a good camp where we can create a spirit that we can do all the work that is necessary for us to do during a camp period. We will play a very good fixture here at, in Kumasi where we will allow the supporters to watch the game. Sometimes, sometimes a team during this period of time will want a game behind closed doors. What we saw this was an opportunity to open the doors for our supporters to, in effect, their farewell to us before we go to AFCON 23. And as regards uh, any friendly game that, um, that is proposed or put to us, um, I am aware of all. I am aware of, of uh, every opportunity that, um, that we have. Um, this is in my conversations that I will have with the GFA. Uh, and we have to take uh, everything into consideration around uh, our camp. So there is uh, always, there's always uh, a reason and there is always a schedule that we have in place that determines our, pre our camp. And um, this is a camp that we very much look forward to. Where is um, the microphone? Follow up. <coughs> Hold on, we have a follow up. Um, I saw your hand. Okay, Kelvin. Kelvin also has three sports. Uh, Coach, you spoke about uh, the injuries and um, the decisions into making the Maspati's decision. Uh, now we look at the central defenders. You mentioned four of them, and it looks like all the four haven't been blessed with too much fitness, you know, in the last eight months. Now, Abel Mumel has been one of our top performing players in the Spanish La Liga. Is that also a reason that I went to it? And how comfortable are you with this for judging from the recent history when it comes to um, injuries? Um, yes, I think as regards um, uh, central defenders, then um, my decision was to include four um, central defenders. Um, and I think for certainly with um, Daniel Amati, he said um, a period up, which was generally a short period, but apart from that, he's he's generally played regular. Um, Jiku, I think the same, and has been back playing for a while. Silisus, <coughs> probably the only one of the three that had a, a longer uh, period out. But this is a player that um, that we value highly, that um, that we have kept in contact. We have been aware of. The, the period of training that he, that he has had. Um, and we have to be comfortable. We have to make these uh, decisions around the options that, uh, that we have. 
And uh, you uh, mentioned one player, but I could mention probably another three or four or five or six in that position. In that position that are playing well and playing regular for, for their clubs. So these are hard decisions. And the decisions I've made are, are, a, balance, are a balance of experience, uh, quality and know-how going into what is obviously a big tournament. Okay, um, hold on, let me, please take the microphone today. Sadiq. Good year to you, Coach. Thank you. Um, the President, in his initial remarks, admitted to the team, uh, which is a different <coughs> fact, being in challenge in recent times, especially the two African Cup of Nations, have been uh, some of the most disastrous for Ghana. And uh, having noticed that these competitions were led by coaches who have some for practical knowledge of the African terrain and had some experience in the AFCO. You have none going into the competition with a team that is under very serious challenges in that competition. How is that an advantage or otherwise for you? Um, I, I think um, there, uh, when you talk about when you talk about uh, challenges, you know, there are um, always balances. So it can be, the balances can be a, a head coach that hasn't experienced this before. It can be a, a head coach that has not so much experience. It can be a head coach that has a lot of experience. It can be a head coach that has experience of working with players in the guise of a head coach and, of course, as an assistant coach. Um, it can be a head coach that is born in the country or, as I see in so many of the uh, African teams, it can be coaches that are born outside of the country. So these are always the balances. One, one, one thing that uh, has to be the common denominator is, is a coach that's prepared to work with the players, that has the know-how of the players, um, and knows what the task is. And I've already spoken about this in this press conference today. I am aware of what the, the challenges are. I think that when I look at the, the African Cup of Nations, I see changes. I see even in the makeup of the, the teams that play, you know, so many more countries have players playing that are not playing in their countries, that are playing abroad, particularly, particularly Europe. And so as much as you speak about the coach and his responsibilities and what he knows about the uh, African Cup of Nations, it's also in every country a group of players that, um, that were not born in that country. So there are so many different, so many different um, guises that can, that can drive, that can drive a head coach on to want success. Okay, I'll pick the, the last three questions and the la will, the la, okay, um, Juliet will give the <coughs> follow up. Frank, you are done, okay then. Then the writer will wrap things up for us. Okay, so Frank. Hello, Coach. You know, Frank here. My question is in respect to the local players that were in the professional squad but didn't make the final one. I spoke to a couple of them that it means a lot to them to at least see themselves in that squad. Do that in the kids. Have you been able to speak to them? And what uh, did you tell them? Um, we had um, a professional squad of uh, 55 players. Um, we have a final squad of 27 players. Um, apart from apart from one player, apart from one player, um, I have spoken to uh, every single player that was in the 55-man squad that didn't make the squad, um, and the one player that um, that I wasn't able to speak to 
uh, is not a local player. So yes, I have spoken to all of the, the local players. I think um, first and foremost, um, I think for them, um, I think it was the pride of uh, being firstly in that 55-man squad. Um, and from that one, from that 55-man squad, the local players was not just a consequence of players that I'd seen, but of course my technical staff, where we spent many hours either watching them live or, or on, on video. Uh, and it was just, a, 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 I think, a, a question of pride for them. I think they appreciated that we took the time to, to contact them. Uh, and what we've said to them is, is that they have to keep doing what they're doing. And um, if they continue, if they continue to do well in their clubs, then of course there's always the opportunity that they would be noticed more by the national team. Okay, Juliet. Um, coach, um, one more question. Um, one team that runs through the Black Stars play in recent times, I'm sure you also are aware about is our inability to elevate our game and also be um, progressive when we are playing matches. Is it a challenge for you going into this tournament um, to maybe bring the team to a better standing in the Africa Cup of Nations or does that trouble you going into the tournament? I'm sorry. Um, no, I think I, I, I think I get the, the question. Um, uh, does it worry me? No, it, it doesn't. Um, but uh, I am very conscious. I am very conscious of the things that we that I think we've done well, and I'm very conscious of the things that um, we haven't done so well. I'm very conscious of the performances that have been good and the performances that have not been so good, um, and the areas to, to improve on. Um, we have the players for probably the best period of time that we've had in the, the training camp that we have and uh, it gives us an opportunity to work within the shape that we have and to address uh, any particular issues that we feel that we have or any areas that we th feel that we can improve. So as head coach, myself and my technical staff are very aware of the areas that we can improve and um, we are very aware of the standards that we need to do well in this tournament. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kwabna Yemua. Good. Yeah, happy New Year to you. Hey. New Year. Good to say. How are you? Okay. Uh, I knew there would be one difficult one, eh? And with all, with all your years as well. Huh? Okay, coach, uh, on behalf of the Sports Writers Association of Ghana and on behalf of the news arrogate myself to this, this far, I wish to assure you that as the president demanded that we rally behind you, you have our full support, we solid behind you, and I'm confident that from what I've seen, God willing, you will lead this team to exercise the ghost that has haunted us for the last four decades. Inshallah. And my question, I want, I'm asking this question because I want us to put this to bed once and for all. There's always a very strong suspicion within Ghanaian footballing circles that when the team is being selected, there are magisterial and tyrannical hands that aid or pressurize you to pick the team, the technical team. I want us to put this to bed once and for all. Was there a time that unseen forces tried to pressurize you to pick the team that you have decided to settle on for the outcome? Um, uh, uh, firstly, thank you very much for your um, encouragement and, and best wishes, uh, particularly as somebody as honourable as yourself that has been doing what you've been doing for the long period that you have and the standing that you have in the media game. So I, firstly I thank you for that. Um, if I'm 
Speaking about mysterious hands, there are uh, only um, two sets of mysterious hands that can have uh, any influence at all on the team that I pick or the squad that I pick, and that is my two assistants, George and Diddy. Um, and that's it. I, I uh, have a relationship with my technical staff, with uh, the GFA um, uh, and uh, the media. And uh, around this period of time, I'm experienced enough and have been doing this job long enough to know that, that if the team doesn't do well, then I will be looked at. This is normal. This is normal as, as management. So certainly under any of them circumstances, is that any team, any tactic, any squad that I pick will be my team. My team, my squad, my tactics. Okay, so colleagues, um, colleagues, thank you very much, um, um, ladies and gentlemen. We've come to the end of the session. <coughs> I would like to thank you for your coming on behalf of the Ghana Football Association. So, like I mentioned earlier, the team begins camping tomorrow. The first training session is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon in Kumasi. Um, they will engage in one friendly game on Monday, January 10th at the Babayara Sports Stadium. Eight. Sorry, Monday, January 8th at the Babayara Sports Stadium. Mm -hmm. And the plan is to depart Accra for Cote d'Ivoire on Wednesday, January 10th. So that is the itinerary for now. But one very important um, information for my colleague, media men and women, is that all the training sessions will be held behind closed doors. But like Coach mentioned earlier, the friendly against Namibia will be open to the public. So at least, so at least um, we shall have the opportunity um, to um, wish the team well before the players depart for Cote d'Ivoire. He also wants me to mention that streaming is not allowed. The friendly, yes. the friendly streaming is not allowed. But begin from um, tomorrow, I'm sure we will continue to hammer it um, in order for all our colleagues to get this particular message. Once again, thank you so much. Enjoy your um, Monday afternoon and a happy new year to all of you. Like so. Okay, now the squad has been named 27 players. If you didn't get it, um, this is what it looks like in terms of the goalkeepers, the defenders, the midfielders, and the forwards. Goalkeepers Lawrence Ati Zigi will be putting it on the screen shortly in the graphic so that you can follow while I speak to them. Joseph Walakot, Richard Ofori, defenders Ali Duseidu, Dennis Odoe, Gideon Mensa, Abdul Fatao Hamid. That's not Fatao Isahaku. Abdul Fatao Hamid is the defender. He plays for Mediema in the Ghana Premier League. Kinsley Schindler, Nicolas Opoku. Daniel Amati, Salisu Mohamed, Alexander Jiku. Midfielders, Baba Idrisu, Elisha Ousu, Majid Ashimeru, Mohamed Kudus, Andre Ayu, Ransford Yeboa Konig Stoffer, Richmond Lamte of Asante Kotoko. Wingers, Osman Bukhari, Joseph Pentil, Jordan Ayu, and Ernest Noama. Forwards, Inaki Williams, Antoine Semenyo and Mediamas Jonathan Soa. So I've not mentioned any clubs for the players except for those from the Ghana Premier League, which I, who I believe, I mean, deserve special mention. So key takeaways, key takeaways. Let's do that now from this squad announcement. The key takeaways. One, 
is that Richmond Lamte of Asante Kotoko, Jonathan Sowa, and Hamid Fatao of Mediama have been named in the 27-man squad. The second key takeaway, probably bigger than the first one. Let's go to the ground. Muftar is speaking to the GFA president. Go back. Fantastic. So uh, we lost the feed to the, the, the GFA where Fat, um, Muftal, I said Fatal. Muftal was speaking to the GFA boss, but this is the squad, um, our social media graphic. You can find it on our socials and share it widely. These are your 27 men going to the Africa Cup of Nations. Chris Hutton said he chose a squad that he believes can be competitive. He did not promise to win the tournament. Uh, Keto Kreku says, Ivory Coast is possible. Very interesting choice of words. He did not say it's possible to win it. He just said, Ivory Coast is possible. I don't know what that means. It's a very ambiguous statement because some people will say that as a GFA president, he should be giving us, you know, some confidence ahead of the tournament. But he can later come back and say, Ivory Coast is possible can mean any of, any of two or three things. But this is the squad for you. Let's know what you think. We are having a Twitter space right now on at Joy Sports GH. I think about 700 people are on that space as we speak on at Joy Sports GH. You can follow. Let's have a discussion on that as well. Also, key takeaway, like I've said, this is also going out. Richmond Lamte from Kotoko, Jonathan Sowa and Hamid Fatal of Mediama are the three local players in the 27-man squad. Now, the difference in this is that if you look at the way Chris Hutton has used his different squads, it is quite likely that these players can get some game time, probably in the second half or stuff like that. For Richmond Lamte, the absence of Thomas Pate, who is a progressor of the ball, which that is to say somebody who progresses the ball. We don't have a lot of players who do that when we have a defensive midfield shield as well. So it's very possible in a game where Kudus comes out, Majida Shimeru, for some reason, is not available. Richmond Lamte can get the time. Let's go back to the Alisa Hotel. Muftar is having some interviews on the ground. Namibia, who were in Southern Africa, decided to come and camp in Ghana, and Algeria decided also to come and camp in Togo. I think by conventional wisdom, if you get into a tournament, you go into areas where the climatic conditions are congenial. And... Uh, you prepare and fine-tune for the main tournament. So I think the APRO was justifiable. And thank God the FA, I want to believe, acquiesced the pressure. Whether they acquiesced the pressure or whether it was their decision to go to Kumasi for now, at least we feel comfortable that we have decided to come in Ghana. There have been periods where the nation came in Ghana, went to tournaments and did well. I was privileged to be with the team in 1991 when we camped at the Specialist Training College, where facilities were not the best. We went to AFCON in 92 uh, in Senegal, and um, we picked silver. So I think it makes a lot of sense to settle in Ghana. And once all the boys are comfortable with that, and the management and the technical team are comfortable, I think we can end the conversation here. You understand the ethos and character that is required to play for this team? All right. All Better right, than any of us. All right. In the last 12 months, there has been questions about whether or not, beyond the quality that these boys have got, they have the temperament to play for Ghana. <laughs> what do you make of this team and in that subject? Regarding the temperament, uh, I want to believe that each member of the squad uh, feels very, very proud being picked to play for this, this country. I think that a player like, for example, if you want to settle on specifics like Inaki, had the option not to play for us. He Settle on Ghana, and it goes for the likes of Semenyon and quite a number of the players. So I think every member feels very, very proud. And if you talk about temperament, I'm not too sure what that means, but I believe that simply because these questions become important because we're not getting the desired results in recent times. But I want to believe that each member is so keen and so desirous to play for the nation and to win medals. Several years back, when Ghana went into tournaments as hot favorites, we have too many strong teams. You know, in those days, if you spoke about teams like Namibia, like Madagascar, like Comoros, they were like minus. But we do know that they've gone into Europe 
uh, and picked players of the ancestral heritage. So you may be playing Comoros, a country of 900,000 uh, people, but those are not the players you are playing with. Every member of that team plays in other Portugal or in France. And I remember bef before playing against Comoros, I had a conversation with Abedi Pele, uh, uh, Dede Ayo, yeah. who indicated that seven of the players of the Comoros team, he played with them during the junior, his junior period in Olympic Marseille. So the terrain is changed. There is a strong leveling of the terrain. So you can't underestimate any other team. But I want to believe that these boys appreciate the enormity of the task that confronts them playing for Ghana. They know that in Ghana, nothing constitutes success apart from laying your hands on the trophy. And they do appreciate that. The last tournament was disastrous. I don't want to believe that this is going to be as disastrous as the last one. I'm very, very confident that these boys would make us proud and go very deep into in this tournament. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Interview with Kwame Eboa. Back to our key points. Thomas Pate, injured, Barbara Man and Fatai Saku, who have opted out, do not make this 27-man squad. Um, there'll be a lot of discussion about what precedent this sets for players to say that I'm not available for selection in, on the eve of um, a major, major tournament? Some, I was listening to our spaces on Joy Sports G8 on Twitter, and somebody was asking that if this were the World Cup, would Barbara Man and Fatal Isahaku say that they are not available for selection, or are the circumstances different? The very big news that is reverberating around the world from this squad is that the vice captain of the Black Stars, because of injury, is not available. Chris Hutton saying that um, his injury, this is one of the biggest injuries in his career. And so he, in consultation with the Arsenal medical team, have decided that it's best if he doesn't come down at all for the African Cup. Remember, in the last Cup of Nations tournament, the Black Stars made some really costly errors where... We had hoped that certain key players who were injured before the tournament will get better during the tournament and then will be able to play. That didn't happen, of course, and a lot of Ghanaians were unhappy because they felt that those players who were injured should have been sat out, should have not been called up, so that players who were more deserving would have gone into the squad. Clearly, this is a learning that Chris Hutin has made from the others. But also... Of, in, in, of notes. Um, Daniel Kofitre, who has also been injured for several months now, does not make it. Kamal Din Suleimana, who was recently injured, does not make it. Joseph Edu of Celta Vigo, who has been injured for about a month and will surely have been in the squad if he was not injured, does not make it. Tariq Lamte of Brighton also does not make it into the squad. So it's a very, I don't know, um, if Ghana had the full opportunity to call some of its top players, you know, it would have been a stronger squad. But this is what we have at the moment, and this is what we are going with. Let's go back to the press conference. The GFA vice president, Mark Addo, is speaking to Muftar Nabila and the rest of the media. Um, um, international standard pitches are inviting me to invite the other countries so that we can improve the quality of our game. Okay, so I... Uh, my FIFA released the results, sorry, the reports of the countries who have received from the gold projects and where yeah. they have used those funds. Right. And we found out that some of the African countries, member associations have used those for training pages and some facilities that can, can actually host matches. Why have we not seen similar investments? Well, we are, we, we are, we, we, if you, if, I don't know whether, we, what you, do you read the Ghana one? Yeah. And what did you see? And, and what did you see? The facility up north. Huh? The facility up north. Yes, but isn't that a, also a facility? In Bolga, they don't have any place to play. But have you seen the facility? It's world class. But you would agree with me that in terms of numbers and the scale... Yeah, but it... Okay, so but we haven't actually finished you know, all the options in terms of we exercising all the options. But it's coming. 
One of them, Bolga, went. It's a world class. There was nothing there for Bolga. And now Bolga has a place at Omitimia Bobo. They work for almost 24 hours in Kolano Bobo Bobo. That's what we want. And the same thing, we will continue at Pram Pram. It's a big project on the table. I bet we should improve Pram Pram. And I make, and we are working on, on the pitches. And we are also looking at potential um, imp, um, an edifice, I bet me place with me a camp because the camping facilities there's no any adequate when all three or four national teams are there it's a problem until we are working on that as well but it's on the table and part of that money will go towards that investment in pram pram okay. it's still not like it's it's the, it's not um how do i say it will still need more for what we need as a country we still need more the reports yeah. also showed that we had been able to access about 81 percent which means ex about 19 percent still Outstanding. It depends on which one. It depends on whether, the, yeah. But it's a good project. They are, they are only, there's one. Okay, so there's a FIFA forward one and FIFA forward two. Right. For forward one, we're able to access 85 yeah. percent. For forward two, we access 71 percent of, of of that. So if you look at the scale, just as you were talking about, we. In, in fact, we do deserve more. You look at, take a look at the projects for 2019, 2022. Not even a single yeah, dollar was spent. Forget it was COVID. You remember, yeah. part of that uh, 2020, 2019, uh, 20, yeah, we bet COVID time, when did COVID, we just cared over, over 23, yeah, 20, yeah, 2020 was COVID, yeah. 2021, right, there was COVID, yeah. it's only 2022 that we all came out of COVID, but what I'm trying to say is uh, the money that we have says now, the evidence is there for you to validate, okay, my CFO is there, in terms of the projects that we have done, it is there. It is open. FIFA, there's no shenanigans going anywhere. So can FIFA for the administrator? Yeah, but okay, okay. So, uh, okay. So normally I do the other way around, but it stands for correcting me. Yeah. The the fact of the matter is, if you go to when we say FIFA project, we have no control. We we guide them what we want to do, but the execution boils down to FIFA. And Bolga is a good example. Everything from the contractor to the procurement, to the execution, was completely controlled by FIFA. Yeah. When they finish, they hand it over. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So the transparency is top. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm coming back to the, the AFCON itself. 20, right. the last edition, not the best of performances, one of the worst since 1984. Uh, uh, briefly, what are the lessons we've learned to go into this tournament? Well, the issue is, I mean, from our side, uh, once again, remember, we, we, we came from COVID. I'm not using that as an example. I'm not using the team trade trained in, uh, I think they were staying in Abu, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. There was um, half of people were COVID and they, they have to come, blah, blah, blah. But to make a long story short, this time around, um, uh, we have uh, a new coach, obviously. Um, uh, the team is also slightly different in the context of the new additions that have come in. Um, we have a lot more youthful team, um, but still seasons, a few of the season players around. So, and also one thing you notice is that, um, one, of the, one of the things you notice is that we are pushing definitely to make sure that um, you don't hear any, any disciplinary issues. Everything is in line. You never hear. If you don't hear it, that means it's working. So let's pray f that the team, we all pray to get to get. Question. President is calling me. I have to go. Yeah. We'll go with you. Uh -huh. The NSC boss is with you. Not, not interview. Just, just.